Shropshire is soaked with stories. They whisper through the leaves of the old forests, they whine in the wind atop the old hills, and they creak through the boards of the old halls. And of course, some of these tales are ghost stories. What is a ghost? A ghost is a being that has such a force of feeling that it can't be destroyed either in this life or the next. And such a being was Wild Edric. Edric was a Saxon lord and he was a bit of a looker. His hair curled to his neck as wiry as winter heather. His blue eyes changed like the sky above the Shropshire Hills and his jaw jutted like the triangles of granite that make up the stiper stones. The stiper stones, those seven rugged peaks of rock that point towards the stars. If you sat in the feasting hall of Wild Edric, he could drink you under the table, make you fall over with laughter at his jokes or make your hair stand on end with his stories. How he'd burned this traitor in a brushwood fire or drowned that enemy in a deep peat bog. Because Edric was a fighter, a free man. He got what he wanted. He knew what was his and what was his were his lands. Wentner, Wootton, Walton Savage, Wattlesborough, Yockleton, Coppington, Alston and Middleton, Lopton, Hopton, Halston and Baston, Neen Savage, Uden Savage, Apedale and Espley, Kenley, Melverley, Hopesay and Catsley, Cantlop, Cressage, Pitchford and Berwick, and of course, the forests of Clun. Edric rode a wild white horse and it was fearless. It didn't flinch when Edric charged it into battle and rode thigh high in blood, but it started and skittered like a girl if there was a sudden shower on a sunny day. At heart, like his horse, Edric was wild. He liked to peel off the weight of the Saxon lord, unlit his brows, let loose his hounds, sound out his horn, call for his men and hunt. Bear, badger, fox, hare, stag, deer, far and near, over hill, dale, brook, vale, through sun, wind, rain, hail, till the rocks rang aloud with his hooves and cries, till the skies span. The chase is better than heaven, he shouted one day as a golden fawn crossed his path. It stared at him with amber eyes, and then it was off, and Edric was after it. He shot it with a silver arrow, and then his hounds brought it down, and the hunt was over. But Edric couldn't stop. He galloped on. He gave the reins to his wild white horse and let it lead him. He came to Stiperstone's Hill, threw himself down on the ground till his heart stopped pounding, and deep, deep in the sweet, sweet heather, he slept and dreamed that the stars were singing to him. And when he woke, the music was still there. He shook his head. No, it had gone. Just bird song. Wait, there it was again. He followed it over the hills and it seemed to him that the lid had come off the world. How had he not noticed the summer until that moment? He was ankle deep in grass. Flowers were everywhere. Red poppy, yellow primrose, blue cornflower. On a peak beyond him he saw seven trees. Between the trees were six dancers. Their cloaks were green, their hair was dark, their arms were pale as a bark-peeled branch, and as he approached he saw that there was another dancer, a seventh in their midst, spinning so fast her golden hair was a fairy mist and her dress a circle around her. Her face was heavenward, her palms upturned, and as Edric stared at her, his heart burned for her, yearned for her, he must have her. He leapt from his horse and strode into the dancing circle. With one arm he picked up the girl, and with the other he fought off her six sisters. More beasts now than sisters. Their hands were claws, their teeth were fangs, their eyes were fire. But Edric held the girl he wanted tight, and in two light bounds he was astride his horse which reared and raced ahead. Villagers below saw, riding from ridge to ridge of the Shropshire Hills, two figures on a wild white horse. One a woman, soft, with long yellow hair flowing, the other a man, with back as firm as iron, and a jaw that jutted like rock. He carried her over the threshold of his hall, and carefully set her on a chair. On one knee he offered her his lands, his heart, his life, if she would just consent to be his wife. But she just stared at him. Her eyes were wide, her mouth opening and shutting like a wet fish on a dry rock. For three days she didn't eat or speak. In the feasting hall she didn't smile at his jokes or flinch at his stories. 
but on the third night she spoke. I am Goda. I am one of seven star sisters that came to earth to dance on Midsummer's Day. You are Edric, straight and true, and I will marry you on one condition, that you never mention my dancing sisters from whom I am now separated. If you do, I'll disappear forever. Edric swore by his wild white horse he would never mention her dancing, never mention her sisters. If time were a line of bunting, and every flag a feather, and every ribbon a bone, from that time to this there hasn't been a happier man on his wedding day than Edric. He was over the moon, he was inside out, not a shred of doubt, not an ounce of fear. He kept her near as his breath for minutes that seemed hours, hours that seemed days, days that seemed years. It was an eternal summer. Kings longed for their company, because to look into the eyes of Goda was to feel the sun on your face. To hear the laugh of Edric was to feel the force of the storm, so charged was he with love for her. But when the leaves were turning, he woke and she wasn't there. He missed her. The first hour he shrugged it off. The second hour he split wood. The third hour he paced up and down. The fourth he called for his servants, saddled his horse and went to search for her. The fifth hour he was frantic, breaking through branch and bracken, his horse digging up the earth with its thundering hooves. When he finally came back to his hall, jaw set, hair matted with sweat, hooves wet with mud, she was there, by the fire. Where have you been? She stood up, arms wide. I'm here now, she said. He knocked her back on the chair. Feathers and petals flew from her pockets. He covered his face. I suppose you've been dancing with those sisters of yours. When he took his hands away from his face, she wasn't there. Not a whirl of a skirt, not a whiff of perfume. He thought that she was teaching him a lesson, teasing him. He scoured his halls and all their secret places. No sign. When he realised she was gone forever, such a cold loneliness and longing blasted through him that he couldn't bear it. He got back on his wild white horse and he hunted her over hill, dale, brook, vale, through sun, wind, rain, hail. He didn't eat, he didn't sleep. He only dismounted at night to climb the peaks of the stiper stones and call to the stars, Goda, I'm sorry, come home. On he rode, till the flesh came from his bone, till the breath blew from his body. But even then his wild white horse kept galloping and only when she faltered and fell, were the villagers able to bury Edric and his horse. What is a ghost? A ghost is a being that has such a force of feeling that it can't rest in this world or the next, and such a being was Edric. His longing for Goda can never die. If you don't believe me, ask one of the locals who've lived in Shropshire for generations, and they'll tell you that they've seen Edric on dark nights charged with energy, like the night before a mine emptied or a war declared. He's riding on his wild white horse, with his jaw set, hair matted with sweat, boots wet with mud, a horn in his hand and his hounds around him. They'll tell you that he's hunting a golden fawn, or maybe a woman with long yellow hair. And you'll know if they've really seen Edric, because his ghost will ride across their face for a second. Their eyes will burn a little brighter, their skin turn a little paler, and their bones glow a little sharper. And if you see that, You'll know that Edric is riding still, because he and his fairy bride will never leave us. The chase is better than heaven, the grass and flowers seem to whisper on a summer's day. And as the breeze blows past you, you might just hear the music of the seven star sisters in the leaves of the trees. <laughs>